Is the Bible Reliable? Capstone Presentation by Darlene Brunk According to the story of David and Goliath, recorded in 1 Samuel in the Bible. The Bible displays remarkable unity, written by dozens of human authors over a period of 1500 years. But is the Bible historically accurate? The Bible's reliability can be tested through archaeology, literature, and science. Reading from 1 Samuel And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with the valley in between them. The Bible claims two nations, the Philistines and the Israelites, were fighting during the late 11th century BC using single combat and extreme details in the location of the Valley of Elah. Is there evidence that confirms that the nations of Philistia and Israel both existed in or around that region in the 11th century BC. Records of the Egyptians and Assyrians confirm the existence of both the nations during that time. The Philistines were called Sea Peoples. Egyptian records show the Sea People progressive. They even attempted to invade Egypt, though they were repelled by Ramses III. During the 11th century BC, the Philistines occupied a good bit of the Mediterranean coastline. That territory had already been claimed by the Israelites who were coming in from the west. Historical records confirm the reason for this conflict. The Valley of Elah was a boundary between two clashing nations. The conflict between David and Goliath took place as the Bronze Age was being replaced by the Iron Age. Archaeology tells us that five Philistine cities have been located. Of the five cities, three have been positively identified. Gaza, Ashkelon, and Ashdod. Of those, Ashdod has been thoroughly excavated. Excavations near the Valley of Elah, which is currently called Kerbet Kiyafa, are led by Israeli archaeologists from Hebrew University, Yosef Garfinkel and Sarah Ganor. They have positively identified and dated this fortification as from the Iron Age, fitting precisely with the biblical time frame. One of the most interesting things they found was a jar with the name Eshbal on it. Eshbal was one of King Saul's four sons. The modern term Palestine came from the word Philistine, a current reminder of their presence even though the people are long gone. There is strong evidence that the Bible story of David and Goliath accurately reflects real nations that were in existence at that time. The episode between David and Goliath was just part of a long history of conflicts between two nations. What additional evidence confirms the time frame of the David and Goliath narrative? Literary Evidence Roman historian Livy recounts a single combat decision between the Romans and the Gauls, among others. Homer, the Greek poet, recalls first men. Goliath could have been one such champion. Names similar to Goliath were common in Philistine society. Homer also described a famous duel between Hector and Ajax in the Iliad. Duels between designated champions were common in warfare during this time. According to the Bible And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span, nine foot and nine inches. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, 122 pounds. 
and he had a bronze armor on his leg and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. Is it possible that a man of Goliath's description and size really existed? Going back to the Bible's description of Goliath, he also wore bronze leg armor and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with a 15-pound spearhead. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Greek archaeologists have uncovered what is now dubbed as the warrior's tomb. Artifacts within include elements of war, like these bronze leg armor, similar to the description of what Goliath may have worn. Archaeological evidence shows that Goliath's dress and armor are well-known features of warfare. Shards of pottery dating to the 9th century BC dubbed Goliath shards were found near the biblical town of Gath, Goliath's hometown. These shards were inscribed with writing that mentions Goliath by name. Also, this famous warrior's vase from the 12th century Mycenae shows very similarly equipped warriors. The Bible records Goliath as being about nine and a half feet tall. Now meet Richard Wadlow, the tallest man in recently recorded history. Born in 1918, he reached a height of 8 feet 11 inches with an arm span of 9.5 feet. Additionally, Marine Corps officers are required to carry a load of up to 152 pounds for 9 miles. Now, Goliath would have been about 400 pounds. At 9 feet tall, Goliath could have easily carried a 122 pound coat of mail. At that same ratio, it would be like an average 180 pound man carrying about 57 pounds. According to the Bible, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Is it possible to mortally wound a person with a sling and a stone? The sling that David used was most likely a handheld piece of leather with a larger patch in the middle. The stone would be used like a missile. Now the History Channel confirms the scientific ability. You can get a stone of a quarter pound and the sling can hurl that at a couple hundred miles per hour. It's like a whip. More supporting evidence. Meet Luis Pons Livermore, champion Balearic Slinger. When he releases the stone from a sling, a snap is heard. This snap from the sling is actually a sonic boom from the sheer power release. It's so powerful, it's breaking the sound barrier. When he took that shot, not only did he hit the target with impressive accuracy, but the load cell measured 3.62 kilonewtons. According to expert trauma surgeons, that's enough to kill a human being. In conclusion, abundant evidence validates the historical accuracy of the Bible's account of David's defeat of Goliath. Archaeology, literature, and science confirm the details given in 1 Samuel. The Bible is a remarkable document, not only for its consistency throughout the 66 books it contains, but also for accuracy in even the smallest of details. Yes, the Bible is reliable. Thank you for watching.